Hello and welcome to Baiju's IES. Let's get started with the analysis of today's The Hindu newspaper, beginning with a news item on page number one of the Delhi edition of The Hindu, and this news item talks about the Rafale deal. Now, this topic is relevant not only for your international relations, which is part of your GS paper too, but it is also relevant for your essays. And I'll tell you slightly later, how is it relevant to your essay? But to understand this newspaper article and many other articles that will come up in your newspapers over a period of time, let me give you the brief background of what this controversy is all about. Now we are and we were in desperate need of fighter jets. The then government of UPA floated the tenders and asked the global manufacturers, can you provide us with these fighter jets? Different companies from different countries, they submitted these tenders and ultimately the government of India awarded the contract to a French company, Dassault, and this French company, Dassault, will provide Rafale jets to the government of India. But now let me tell you very briefly what were the significant features of this contract. Under this contract, 126 Rafale jets would be supplied by this company to the government of India. The total cost of this contract is close to 54,000 crores. But the most beautiful aspect of this deal was a clause called transfer of technology. What is this transfer of technology clause? Under this transfer of technology clause, Dassault will supply the government of India only 18 jets in flyaway condition. That means 18 jets will be manufactured in France, will be supplied to the government of India so that these 18 jets can be immediately put into operation. What about the remaining? The remaining jets would have to be assembled in India. And who will assemble these jets? A government company called Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, which is situated at Bengaluru. So this amounts to transfer of technology where Dassault will supply this technology, transfer this technology to HAL and it is going to be a win-win situation for everybody. But then the governments changed, both in India as well as in France. This Rafale deal could not be put into operation. The deal was still not finalized because the negotiations were going on. And ultimately, Prime Minister Modi, during his April 2015 visit to France, he announced a deal to buy 36 Rafale jets. And that is where the controversy began. Now let's look at what this controversy is all about. This deal was signed by the government of India with the government of France. So instead of government concluding a deal with a foreign company, this was a government to government negotiation. The government of India justified this government to government contract on one condition that the supply of these Rafale jets would now become swift will now become very quick because after all it is a government to government contract and when we are directly dealing with the government Dassault will be in a position to quickly supply us with these 36 jets but all these 36 jets would be supplied to India in flyaway condition that means none of these jets will be assembled by HAL in India. All these jets will be provided to India in flyaway condition. The then Defence Minister Manohar Parikar told the parliament that the previous UPA government negotiation to buy 126 fighter jet stands cancelled. And now this deal under which 36 fighter jets would be supplied to government of India in a flyaway condition, the total cost as per various estimates is pegged at 59,000 crore. The opposition is asking few issue, few questions. Number one, if it is the same aircraft, why less in number? If it is the same supplier, why higher cost? Because the previous deal was at 54,000 crore to supply 126 fighter jets. Now the deal is with the same supplier, but it is pegged at 59,000 crore and that too only for 36 jets. 
and how will reliance benefit or reliance defense which is owned by anil dhirubhai ambani what is the reliance link in this rafale controversy under this government to government contract which india has signed with france there is one policy called offset what is this offset very briefly if the contract is for 59000 crore the offset pricing here in this case is 50% what is this 50% what is the 50% of 59000 crore that means close to 30000 crore under this offset clause daso will have to provide contract or contracts to indian companies worth 30000 crore that means if the sol is going to earn close to 59000 crore because of this deal what is the offset clause under this under this offset clause the the sol has to provide contracts has to give contracts to indian companies worth 30000 crore rupees and this is part of prime minister modi's pet project called make in india that means when a foreign company will award contracts to indian companies these indian companies will manufacture in india so what will be benefited the make in india campaign of the prime minister modi but who are these indian companies which will benefit one such company is drdo which is the government owned defense research and development organization the another institution which will benefit out of this is reliance defense Reliance Defence controlled by Anil Ambani will not manufacture components for Rafale no they won't do that why because all these Rafale jets which will be delivered to India will be in fly away condition so you don't have to manufacture anything related to these Rafale jets but what Reliance Defence will manufacture in India some of the components that Dassault can use in their different projects for example in their business jets so that means the components that will be used by the saw in its business jet project those will be supplied by this reliance defense but the opposition is raising one issue that why is it that reliance defense has entered into a contract with the saw why is it that an indian company hindustan aeronautics limited was not awarded this contract why is it that reliance defense which is a new player in the market with no experience whatsoever and this new player has been given precedence over an experienced hindustan aeronautics limited what is this controversy all about the government of india justified this the government of india said see we only dealt with a government to government contract wherein 36 fly away rafale jets would be supplied by dassault to india now dassault is free to choose its indian partner dassault has all the liberty to decide which indian entity they want to partner with and this entity can supply defense related projects or defense related equipments to dassault the government of india has no role whatsoever in the joint venture between the sol and the reliance defense but then came a shocker yesterday the then french president with whom the government of india negotiated this rafale deal he gave an interview to a french newspaper wherein he said that the government of france had no other option but to deal with reliance defense because reliance defense was offered to us by the government of india so government of india whoever nominated is nominated by the government of india to partner the sol that company we had to accept and if reliance defense was proposed by the government of india we had no other option but to deal with the reliance defense now the french government today has clarified that no that is not the position the sol is a private entity and the sol has the liberty to decide which indian company they want to partner for this offset program so this is what the controversy is all about finance minister arun jetli gave a speech in the parliament 
wherein he said that we can't share the specifics of this de deal. Why? Because if we give you a breakup of this 59,000 crore deal, then the world will come to know which specifications are there in the Rafale jets. And if we confirm or we provide or we supply with all the breakup, all the cost breakup of this deal, ultimately our enemy will come to know the specifications of these Rafale jets and we are going to compromise our national security. That is the argument presented by the finance minister when people asked, why don't you share the details of this deal? But the government is duty bound to share the details of this deal with two entities, Comptroller and Auditor General of India, as well as the Public Accounts Committee of the Parliament. So this is what the controversy is all about. One important detail or one important fact that can be important for your prelims examination is that these Rafale jets are used by Egypt, are used by Qatar as well. And these Rafale jets were used in the Libyan airstrikes. This is what the controversy is all about. And let's move on to another important news on page number one of the Delhi edition of the Hindu. And this is in continuation to what we discussed yesterday. Yesterday, I told you that the government of India has agreed to the peace talks which were offered by the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan. And now two foreign ministers of India and Pakistan will meet on the sidelines of United Nations General Assembly meeting in New York. But now these talks between two, finance, two external affairs or foreign ministers of India and Pakistan have been called off. Why? Two reasons have been given by the government of India. Reason number one is that three special police officers were arrested from Shopian district in Jammu and Kashmir. They were abducted by the terrorists and then they were killed. These SPOs were killed by the terrorists who are backed by Pakistan. So when Pakistan has not shunned its policy of exporting terror to India, what is the point of talking to Pakistan? Second, Indian government cancelled these talks because of one another reason. And the reason was stamps were issued by the government of Pakistan and these stamps were honoring the Kashmiri militants, particularly Burhan Wani, who was killed in an encounter in 2016. So this openly shows that the government of Pakistan is not serious in holding peaceful talks, peaceful negotiations with the government of India. So why should we talk to Pakistan? And that is why we are calling off this foreign ministers meeting between India and Pakistan. But then there is an editorial on page number one, sorry, page number eight of the Delhi edition of the Hindu and the editorial questions the calling off these talks by India. What are the arguments given by the editorial? Number one is that if on the basis of the fact that three SPOs were killed by Pakistan-backed terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir and on this ground you are cancelling these talks, but this is an ongoing process in Kashmir. We have seen more than 30 policemen have been killed in the last one year where militants abduct these policemen from their homes and kill them in the open fields. So if this process of killing of policemen by Pakistan backed militants was continuing for a long time, then why did you agree to hold talks with Pakistan in the first place? Second, the stamps were issued to honor Burhan Warni by the government and that is why the government of India is cancelling these talks. But the editorial says these stamps were issued in July and in July Imran Khan was not the Prime Minister of Pakistan. So these stamps were issued by the previous government. So on this ground, why did you cancel the talks between India and Pakistan's foreign ministers? The editorial says 
yes it is the prerogative it is the decision of the government of india to decide when they want to talk to pakistan yes it is the right of the government of india to send a strong signal to pakistan that talks and terror cannot go together but there has to be some coherence in india's foreign policy towards pakistan there has to be some stability you can't in a single day announce the talks and in the very next day cancel the talks for those reasons which were known in the past as well so that is the editorial analysis that we have done clubbing the editorial along with the news item on page number 1 of the delhi edition of the hindu now let's look at another important news drinking water program not effective in odisha observes the cag and this is on page number 3 of the delhi edition of the hindu now let's look at what this issue is all about there is a national rural drinking water program few important facts water is a state subject that means under the distribution of powers under schedule 7 of indian constitution water is a state subject but when we look at rural water supply this rural water supply subject is mentioned in 11th schedule as well what is this 11th schedule 11th schedule talks about those subjects or those powers that can be given to panchayati raj institutions so although water is a state subject but rural water supply comes under 11th schedule of indian constitution and most of the states what they have done they have empowered their panchayats to implement this rural water supply program since 1972-73 since 1972-73 the central government is helping the state governments in providing safe drinking water to the people how there was a program of the central government called accelerated rural water supply program and under this program the central government was funding the state governments in providing safe drinking water to the people the same program was revised in the year 2009 and the same program became national rural drinking water program but how is this program different from the previous program there are two three very important points that you have to understand the purpose of this program or the target area of this program was habitation that means the whole focus of accelerated rural water supply program was to see whether at the habitation level we have drinking water or not that means whether we have at the village level drinking water or not so basically this program would say if in a particular village we have a tube well that can be accessed by the people living in that particular village then we can safely say we are in a position to supply safe drinking water to its people but now under this scheme of 2009 the focus is not on the village the focus is not on the habitation the focus is on households whether an individual household has access to safe drinking water or not that's the difference between the previous program and the current program second this program dependent was dependent upon or we can say over dependent upon is a single source of water that can be a surface water or a ground water but this new program it started in 2009 it is not over dependent on a single source it uses multiple sources to provide safe drinking water to the people which are these multiple sources it can be surface water it can be ground water it can be rain water harvesting as well that's the difference between these two programs and the most important feature of this program of 2009 is that under this program funding is provided so that the traditional water bodies are revived 
and under this new program the states are awarded based on their performance so if a state is performing well in providing safe drinking water to its people more funding more performance based funding is made available to that state but what this news item talks about this news item talks about that in odisha this drinking water program is not effective and who has observed this a constitutional body called comptroller and auditor general so the target was to cover 35% households by march 2017 but what odisha could achieve only 3.7% and that is something that you will have to understand cag also talks about that under this national drinking water program or national rural drinking water program tube wells were to be dug up but these tube wells were dug up by this agencies without conducting scientific survey so without any scientific survey you will get people to dig up a particular area of land and ultimately what you found it was dry so drinking water could not be made available to the people so when drinking water is not made available to the people at the same time the investment into digging up this tube well leads to wastage and that is what has been observed by comptroller and auditor general and it's a very important news not only for your prelims but also for your gs paper 2 wherein sometimes the questions are asked to evaluate the various centrally sponsored schemes of the government of india and this is where it becomes relevant let's look at another important issue that deals with ban on adoption by livin partners lifted and it talks about something called cara what is the cara it stands for child adoption regulatory authority and this authority is a statutory body that means provided by an act of parliament and this body comes under ministry of women and child development what is the purpose of cara or cara the purpose is that this cara agency functions as a nodal agency and this nodal agency will regulate the adoption of indian children if indian children are to be adopted for that you have to approach a nodal agency called cara but there was a circular issued by this agency on may 31 wherein it barred livin partners from adopting indian children now what cara has done it has withdrawn withdrew that circular and now livin partners can also adopt babies can also adopt children under the rules issued by cara it permits that a single woman can she adopt a child yes she can adopt a child of any gender but if a single man wants to adopt an indian children indian child he can adopt only boys and married couples can also adopt a child but they have to satisfy that they are physically mentally and financially stable to raise a child this is what this issue is all about ban on adoption by livin partners lifted so what is relevant some of the facts regarding cara some of the facts regarding the rules that have been issued by cara and i have prepared one mcq as well which talks about cara that i am going to discuss at the end of this lecture but there are others who are saying that not only should livin partners be allowed to adopt children but why can't we adopt why can't we allow lgbt community to also adopt children and if lgbt community is also allowed to adopt children we can see that a large number of orphans large number of destitute children can be adopted by these lgbt community members so that is one more suggestion from my side to the government to the cara that please allow lgbt community to also adopt the children now let's look at 
a news item on page number 5 of the Delhi edition of the Hindu that deals with your science and technology, GS paper 3. Now, this is something that we have discussed, I think, twice in the past. Prime Minister Modi addressed the nation from the ramparts of Red Fort on August 15, and he made an announcement that India will set up and send a manned mission to space where individuals will be sent to space. And that project of the ISRO is called Gaganyan. And this mission will be launched. And the ISRO chief has said that we are all set to launch this manned mission to space called Gaganyan before India completes 75 years of independence. And a crew will be sent to space for close to five to seven days. And for this, a new launch pad is being set up by ISRO. And that is something which is very important for your prelims point of view. Now, let us look at another important issue on page number nine of the Delhi edition. Let's say, for example, I want to set up a factory in a particular area. Let's say this factory deals with construction, manufacturing, fertilizer, so on and so forth. But by setting up a factory, what will be the impact of this factory on the environment? Or will there be any impact on the environment or not? For that, an assessment is done before the clearance can be given to me to start this factory. And that is what we call environment impact assessment. So an assessment is done. What will be the impact of this factory on the environment? What are the steps that you have to take to maintain and support the environment? Maybe you will have to set up sewage treatment plants, so on and so forth, so that the environment is not polluted because of your activities. And it is only when this environmental impact assessment is given, then the clearance can be given to me that you can set up this factory. But under these rules of environment impact assessment, I have to, because I'm a factory owner, I have to submit six monthly report. Whether I'm complying with these instructions given in environment impact assessment or not. That means whether I am adhering to the rules and regulations that are required for me to follow when project clearance was given to me. This I have to submit to the authorities every six months. But then whether I am following these instructions or not, for that there has to be an audit. For that there has to be a monitoring mechanism. This monitoring is supposed to be done by the regional offices of Ministry of Environment and Forests. But the point is, this ministry is understaffed. When it is understaffed, that means it is not in a position to ensure that this six monthly report, which is given by the factory owners, which is given by the business units, is properly audited, monitored and evaluated. Now a landmark step has been taken. The union ministry is proposing. It is still not done, but it is proposing that we will allow IITs and other expert organizations that they will conduct this compliance monitoring mechanism. So it's going to be a big shift. But there are some experts, for example, Kanchi Kohli, an environmental researcher with Center for Policy and Research based in New Delhi. What he says that, yes, it is a good thing to involve the expert organizations, IITs, to monitor the six monthly reports. But we have to involve the affected people as well. Those people who are affected by these companies, by these factories, they should also be involved so that these people can also monitor these six monthly compliance reports by the factories or the companies. That's one more thing that we have to understand. Now, let us look at some of the editorials and columns that are relevant for your examination from the today's newspaper. One is overnight flip flop. And this editorial talks about the cancellation of foreign ministry level talks between India and Pakistan by the government of India. And whatever the editorial is talking about, we have discussed that. But now let's look at another important article, Seeking a Managed Exit. 
And this article is written by a former ambassador to Afghanistan, Rakesh Sood. Now, let me tell you briefly what is the context of this newspaper article. Afghanistan was under the control of Soviet Union. Or if I can use the words used by Soviet Union, then Soviet Union comprised up of Afghanistan as well. Then there was a movement launched by militants in Afghanistan to declare independence from the Soviet Union and to throw Soviet Union away from Afghanistan. Jihadists were part of this movement to overthrow the communist Soviet Russia. An entity called Taliban was created. Taliban basically means students. Mullah Umar was part of Taliban, the head of Taliban. So all these jihadists, Taliban, jihadists from different parts of the country, different parts of the world, they came to Afghanistan to fight the Russians, to throw Russians away from Afghanistan. This was in early 1990s. One such individual who went to Afghanistan to fight the Russians was Osama bin Laden, who founded a global terrorist organization called Al-Qaeda. But who was supporting these jihadists, Taliban, Osama bin Laden? As per various reports, they were funded and supported by Pakistani secret agency called ISI and they were also funded by CIA of United States of America. Why? Because it was a period of Cold War between Russia and the United States of America and American foreign policy ensured that we will support all those elements who will overthrow the Soviet regime, who will dismember the Soviet regime. And ultimately Afghanistan was liberated and then came the Taliban rule. And the capital of this Taliban rule was Kandahar. And it was ruled by an Amir called Molana Umar. Ultimately, what happened, Osama bin Laden, who was supported by the United States, by the Pakistani secret intelligence agencies in this Afghanistan war, suddenly he turned to Rook. And he started attacking the United States establishments, installations in different parts of the world. There was one big bomb blast in Kenya in a port city of Mombasa, wherein a large number of in, uh, American and Israeli civilians got killed. And many such areas were attacked by Osama bin Laden. And then came an event which changed the world. September 11 attacks, the 9-11 attacks on Twin Towers, Pentagon and other areas of United States of America. Then what USA asked for, that dear Taliban, since Osama bin Laden is in Afghanistan, Please hand over Osama bin Laden to us. Molana Umar, he refused. He said, we will not hand over Osama bin Laden to United States. And then in October, United States attacked Afghanistan. When United States attacked Afghanistan, Taliban rule got over. And then for many, many years, the government of United States was controlling Afghanistan. But then elections could also take place. Democracy was restored in Afghanistan. But if democracy was restored, peace was not restored. We still saw attacks after attacks and many people thought that this US war in Afghanistan, US has lost this war. And when US has lost this war, President Obama announced that we will withdraw from Afghanistan. Many people thought that this withdrawal of United States from Afghanistan is a statement of defeat. They have accepted that they have lost in Afghanistan. But particularly, it was a threat for India. Because if United States withdraws from Afghanistan, these terrorist elements will then come close to our borders in the north. They can also enter into Kashmir. And then it's going to be a serious internal security threat to India as well, external security threat to India as well. Then President Donald Trump, what he did, he announced a new policy. And he said, we will have an Afghan led and Afghan owned reconciliation process in Afghanistan. And then channels were opened so that we can talk to Taliban as well and bring Taliban back into the mainstream politics of Afghanistan. 
and this is where Russia also got involved, Iran also got involved and Russia and Iran they held talks with Taliban so that the Taliban's can be persuaded to enter into the democratic setup of Afghanistan. One of the principal reasons that Russia and Iran give because they are engaging with Taliban is that if we do not talk to Taliban, Afghanistan will be taken over by Islamic State. That is why we have to talk to Taliban and involve Taliban in the peace process in Afghanistan. So a differentiation was made between a good terrorist and a bad terrorist. Uh, Taliban's are good terrorists, Islamic states, individuals, they are bad terrorists. But what this editorial talks about is that this policy of President Donald Trump is going to fail. What this policy is, that we will have a Taliban a part of the administration in Afghanistan, part of the government in Afghanistan, so that we can quickly withdraw from Afghanistan and we can tell the world, see, we entered into Afghanistan, we restored democracy in Afghanistan, we gave peace to Afghanistan, and now when we have achieved all our objectives, we are withdrawing from Afghanistan. But this Rakesh Sood says is not going to be possible because Pakistan ISI will not allow this. So Pakistan will try and have its grip over the Afghanistan government because Afghanistan should not be in a position to have good peaceful relations with India as well. That is the whole crux of this newspaper article written by Rakesh Sood wherein he talks about seeking a managed exit. That means a managed exit by United States so that they exit from the Afghanistan and tell the world that we restored democracy in Afghanistan. That means this was an, the policy which was announced by Donald Trump of Afghan-led and Afghan-owned reconciliation process. It's not bearing any fruits as of now. These were some of the most important articles and editorials that we had to discuss in today's newspaper. Now, let me tell you some of the facts related to the prelims. Which of the following statements are correct? CARA regulates in-country adoption, while inter-country adoption is under the command of Ministry of External Affairs. This statement is wrong because CARA deals with both in-country adoption as well as inter-country adoption. Second statement, India is signatory to Hague Convention on Inter-Country Adoption, but it is yet to ratify it. This statement is also incorrect because this Hague Convention on Inter-Country Adoption of 1993 has been ratified by the government of India in the year 2003. So which of the following statements are correct? None, because both these statements are incorrect. Second, there is a news item under the national page of the Hindu wherein it talks about that the MLAs of Goa Assembly, the Congress MLAs, they have written a letter, they have written a proposal to remove the Speaker of Legislative Assembly of Goa. Now, which of the following statements are correct? Speaker of Legislative Assembly cannot vote on a bill tabled in the legislature under any circumstance. This statement is wrong because Speaker can vote. For example, there is a bill. 50 MLAs of a legislature, they vote in favor of this bill. 50 MLAs vote against this bill. So what will happen to this bill? It enters into a deadlock. To resolve this deadlock, the speaker has a casting vote. That means the speaker will vote either in favor of this bill or against this bill just to resolve this deadlock. So when this statement says under any circumstance, the speaker cannot vote, this is wrong. Because in this instance, when there is a tie, the speaker has the power to vote. The speaker of a legislative assembly can be removed based on the resolution passed by the house by a majority of the total membership of the house. This statement is wrong because the Speaker of Legislative Assembly can be removed by effective majority. And what is this effective majority? Majority of all the then members of the House. That means those members of the House who are present at that time. Majority of these members, that means more than 50% of the members present in the House, 
and they can be in a position to remove the speaker. So it is not that the speaker is not removed on the basis of the majority of the total membership of the house. So this is absolute majority. The speaker is not removed by absolute majority, but the speaker is removed by effective majority. So both these statements are incorrect. Statement number three, match the following. Rafael, France, Lockheed, United States, Saabs, Gripen, Sweden, make Russia. And that is your match the following. And when I said in the beginning that the Rafael deal is relevant for your essay as well, because what if a question on crony capitalism is asked? You can cite the example of Rafael deal as well. And what is this crony capitalism? It's a nexus between the government, bureaucracy and the corporates. And this unholy nexus leads to more benefit for corporates, bribes to the businessmen and the politicians. And ultimately, the people are the sole loser in this deal. There are various reports which say that when Anil Ambani led Reliance Defense was awarded this contract, was awarded this joint venture with Dassault, Reliance Entertainment, which is also owned by Anil Ambani, they decided to make a movie with the partner of Mr. Hollande, who was the president of France at that point in time. So the partner of Hollande, the actress Juliette, a movie was sought to be made by Reliance Entertainment. So this is one argument put forward by the critics that this is a classic case of crony capitalism. Now let's look at mains based answers, mains based questions, answers should not be more than 200 words. Speaker of a legislature is a symbol of impartiality and propriety. How far do you agree with this observation? So for writing this answer, you have to look at how the speaker of various legislatures as well as the speaker of Lok Sabha has functioned. The role of the speaker under anti-defection law and how it has been politicized. How the speaker sometimes suspends the members of the part, members of the parliament belonging to the opposition political party. So whether the speaker indeed is a symbol of impartiality or is the speaker partial, that is something that you'll have to write. Second question, Indian constitution recognizes unity in diversity and rejects unity in uniformity. Comment, please write answers to these questions under the comment section so that we can evaluate. And that is it for now. This is the analysis of today's The Hindu Newspaper. And if you like this initiative, please don't forget to like the video, comment on the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for being with us. Have a great day.